Welcome to a new series of mine called Finish That Backlog, a series where I review games to fill out my backlog. Everyone has their own New Year's resolutions, and I decided that mine would be to finish every single game in my backlog. This is something that people never seem to get around to accomplishing, but I thought about actually dedicating some time to finishing at least some games in my own backlog. Given the amount of games that I have though, as well as the games that I forgot that I need to finish, I don't think that I'll be able to beat all the games by the end of the year, but at the very least my goal should be to remain dedicated to this by 2022. I'm not going to try and make these analytical video essays, nor am I going to include all that fancy schmancy editing and personality like in my other videos as well. Instead, these are just going to be mostly laid back reviews where I casually share my thoughts on each game that I talk about. And as a bonus for finishing more games in this series, I'll be ranking each one on a list of favorites. You could consider this as something of an inverse of I hate everything search for the worst series, and yeah, that's a good way of putting it. If you're interested in checking out the games that are in my backlog, I'll leave the list in the description. Just don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter to let me know which game you'd want to see me cover next. In case you're wondering why I decided to start this series with Super Mario RPG, it's because of this. Uh, oh no! no! Oh no! Oh no! no! Oh, no! 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 Gino might have been in one game, but it is one of the most popular and beloved Super Nintendo games, Mario spin-offs, and RPGs of all time. Seriously, if you ever grew up with YouTube in the mid to late 2000s and didn't find a Let's Play or walkthrough of Super Mario RPG, or if you've never bopped a Kerberfer's Rawest Forest as a kid, you had no childhood, plain and simple. But does that mean I agree with this game's popularity? Over my winter break, I had to quarantine a total of 10 days before going back to college, so I decided to bust out the good old Wii with GameCube controller support and find out for myself. Also, goodness, I never realized how much I'd miss Virtual Console, holy crap. I did remember liking this game as a kid, but I also remember beating the giant squid and somehow getting lost, so I stopped playing. But I decided to give this game a fresh start and start a new file, because, well, that's always a mood. So let's see if Super Mario RPG still holds up in 2021, and see if Gino is a character that deserves the popularity that he has in the context of Smash Bros. Mario RPG is a lot like your typical turn-based RPG, but with a twist in gameplay where you press a button at the right time to deal extra damage. However, you're never punished for missing these action commands. You'll just deal less damage. But at the same time, these action commands never make the game too easy, so it means that novice players will have plenty of time to get the hang of the action commands, and seasoned veterans will still have to think while they fight bosses instead of just spamming attacks. There are also special moves that have action commands of their own, whether it be mash the Y button, rotate the control pad, or time the Y button properly to deal more damage and or continue the attack. The thing is, unlike most RPGs, this game's special points are shared among the party, so you really do need to think about which special moves to use during a battle. The game is still really fun to play. Getting those action commands feels way more satisfying than you would think. Like I said, they do make the game pretty easy, but easy games don't bother me as long as I have to put in the effort to make it easy, and Mario RPG certainly does that, not just with the action commands, but in the side quests as well. The side quests in this game aren't really anything different from other JRPGs. They mostly just boil down to collect some special items and explore around to find some rare items. But I like this approach. One of my favorite things to do in an RPG is explore the towns. Sometimes background characters can be really endearing, and that is certainly the case with this game. There are a ton of one-off characters like Boshi, Frog Fuchsius, Croco, the people of Nimbus Land, and more. This game's side quests encourage you to explore the towns, and I love it! I couldn't complete all of the side quests, but I like the ones that I was able to finish. You can find some really good stuff that does make the game a little easier, but again, you're putting in the effort to make the game easier, so it's all good. Even though I've never finished the game as a kid, I've always remembered much of the game's soundtrack. It still holds up incredibly well. Each track is able to convey multiple feelings at once despite some of them having simple melodies and ideas. From the cheery prestige of the Mushroom Kingdom to the optimistic mystery of the forest maze. Even the battle themes always have an empoweringly high energy to them. The regular battle theme is always bumping with personality so that you can never stay mad at the game even when you're not doing so hot. 
The sub-boss theme is letting you know that there's an enemy that is noticeably stronger than something you faced before, while still giving you enough confidence to win the fight. And the primary boss theme signifies that you've reached the end of a chapter and this one enemy is the only thing in your way of the next star piece. That said, there are also some more complex melodies within this game, such as the Gate to Smithy's Factory, which 8-Bit Music Theory went over in his video on strange time signatures, and my personal favorite track in the game, Nimbus Land, which is just a joy to listen to. This game easily has one of the best soundtracks in the entire Mario franchise, up there with Galaxy and Odyssey. I really love this game's sound design in general. Despite having a lot of quirky sound effects, they work just as well as your everyday sound effects. You have altered versions of sound effects from existing Mario games, whether it be slightly or significantly, and you have some new sound effects that complement those classic Mario noises. On top of that, the sound design of this game just radiates a lot of energetic personality, which is fitting given that it's a Mario game. And I think this is my favorite thing about the game. Despite being an entirely different genre, it still feels like a typical Mario game. It actively takes the Mario formula and turns it into an RPG. There's some platforming here and there, there are hidden blocks that contain rare items, the towns are various themes of Mario levels, there are vines that you can climb, the Star Road from Super Mario World is brought back, there's quite a bit of cool stuff from the Mario franchise. And even though this game has a big story, it never lingers in one particular area and feels much more down to earth. This type of storytelling hasn't been utilized to this degree in any other Mario RPG. Not to say that it's entirely absent in the other Mario RPG series, but the Mario & Luigi games, while do try to feel like an actual Mario game, are incredibly zany, and the narrative and characters feel over the top, and most Paper Mario games pretty much do their own thing. Now, none of these are problems, don't get me wrong. If anything, that's exactly why we love those games. I'm saying that Mario RPG combines the best aspects of both of these sub-series into one novel adventure. And I think that's why so many people consider this game a cult classic. It has the best aspects of every Mario RPG while still being enough to stand on its own even to this day. Now that I've said everything about the game that I want to, it's time to answer the question. Is Gino really that cool of a character? Well. Outside of the fact that Gino has retractable guns on his hands, which he can also shoot out like missiles, outside of the fact that he is probably the best party member in the game that isn't Mario, is Gino worth all the attention from the Smash Brothers community and from Sakurai? Given how the Mario series has a plethora of delightful side characters, and how there have been a whole lot more as the games have been growing, Gino's not my favorite Mario character. But do I still like him? Does Gino still hold up as a character? Yeah, he's pretty cool. He does suffer from not being in enough mainline games, but lots of Mario characters suffer from that problem. Even my all-time favorite Mario character. Gino has a badass personality with an awesome design to match. He also balances out the other characters pretty well, being the voice of reason outside of Peach. But even then, Peach supports while Gino leads. He's the main reason why Mario and friends go on this quest in the first place. So, yeah, Gino is a cool character. But hot take of the night, Mallow is a better character. Like, yeah, Gino is better in terms of gameplay, sure, but... Mallow is just more entertaining to watch, has a more riveting character arc, and I just love him so much. He's a puffy marshmallow role that must be protected. Though, in terms of Smash Brothers, Gino's moveset would fit the game better, but I won't get into more details than that because apparently liking Gino is illegal now. I'm sorry for liking characters in the games that they're from, I guess. Overall, Super Mario RPG is a great game that most definitely deserves the praise that it gets. I'm not gonna give it a review score or whatever because no. I'm still gonna rank each game in this series of mine. It is nice that we're starting off with a really good game. Not to mention that given how Alpha Dream had to file for bankruptcy about a year ago, as well as the direction that the Paper Mario games have chosen to take, you'd be surprised how refreshing it is to play a Mario RPG once again. It's nice that this game is featured on the Super Nintendo Classic, but I'm kinda surprised that it's not on the Nintendo Switch Online collection. Given the popularity of this game, it's definitely gonna change, and the fact that nearly every other game from the Super Nintendo Classic is included, even Star Fox 2, so it's only a matter of time before Super Mario RPG makes its way onto the service. With that said, thank you for watching. 
The next game on my backlog is Final Fantasy IV, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna make a video on it next. Now that I'm back at college, I can finally play all of my PS4 and Switch games that I have on my backlog. I also brought a few extra PS3 games with me and also Ape Escape, just in case. Pick one of these games from my backlog and leave me a comment asking me to finish that game first and make a video on it. And don't forget to follow my Twitter and Instagram for my progress on this series and subscribe to my channel for more videos. With all that said, thanks for watching, I hope that your day has been absolutely wonderful, and I will see you when I feel like it.